Assalamu alaikum. Here we are again. We will go through a different topic in research related lecture series. Now we will take you to an exciting part of the research. We will take the first step in your research project that is, understanding types of research, what fits your project. So, your first step was that you have an idea, you think it's a good idea, it's new, or you're challenging an old concept, and it's an interesting idea, and it's something that is doable. And you really like the idea and you are passionate about the topic so now you have the knowledge you have to review the literature and you're ready to go with your good idea and a well formulated research question you have your supervisor to work with that's a very important aspect of the work you are part of the team and you do have a time frame to finish your work let's start the types of research could be a basic science research or clinical research Basic science research dealing with basic science stuff, while clinical research is what clinicians are interested in doing, dealing with patients, diagnosis, or therapy. Most of the time you will find yourself doing more of a clinical research, although you still can do a basic science research. So clinical researches can be either observational studies or experimental studies. And the name can tell observational studies is something that you observe, you don't really have a control on the population you are examining, you are rather just following them or observing them for an outcome of your interest. While experimental studies, you expose your group to an exposure variable and you are observing the occurrence of the outcome. I will give some examples of these for you to understand what types of clinical research. This will be very brief rather than detailed. You need more lectures to really go through each type of these studies to learn about the pros and cons of these. So observational studies can be ecological case series, cross-sectional studies, case control, and cohort studies, while experimental studies are the randomized control trials. So I will go through some examples for you to better understand different type of study designs. So we started with neurology, and you picked epilepsy as your interested part of neurology. We thought we will go more into a lifestyle of these patients, and we're interested in the effect of electronics on epilepsy. So we have what looks like a very good research question. How will the mobile phones affect the seizure frequencies in adolescent patients with non-degenerate epilepsy? This is our PICO formula. Our population is the adolescent patient with non-degenerate epilepsy. The intervention was the use of mobile phones. The comparison group has no mobile phones, and the outcome is seizure frequency. If I started with adolescent patients with non-degenerate epilepsy, I looked at the whole group of these patients, and then I want to look at those who use mobile phones and those who did not use the mobile phones. So now I have two groups of the whole population, mobile phone use or no use. I will ask about who had seizures and if so, what are the numbers of seizures. I will collect other data about the medications, compliance to medications, sleep patterns and sleep deprivations. Getting more information about your population is very crucial. You don't only look at cell phone, no cell phone, or seizure, no seizures. You have all more information, so you are building your database, and you are looking at other variables that may have an effect on your outcome. We will go through this when we have more time to look at how to analyze the data, how to analyze our outcome. By the end of the study, we can understand the prevalence of cell phone use in these patients, and we can estimate the association between cell phone use and seizure frequency. This type of study is cross-sectional study or prevalence study. I started with the one population, I took like a section, and then I separated them according to the use of cell phone or no cell phone. I looked at the outcome of interest and other variables. This is usually a beginning of understanding and association between an exposure and an outcome. How about if I started with adolescent patients with non lesion epilepsy? I know these are the people who have the disease, and I want to compare them to adolescent patients with epilepsy of other types. I looked at these two groups in terms of matching them. For which? I will match for age and gender, which means for each group I will take the same patient age the same gender until I collect an equal number of participants in each group. I may collect 100 or 200 in each group 
or what have you at least I match them for age and gender this is a common matching type there are other types of matching but this is a common one I want to identify who use cell phones in each group and how many hours for example who had seizures a number of seizures I'm applying this for the two groups I also collect other data such as medications, compliance, sleep patterns, and deprivation. So now, as if I have two groups, they may look like very similar, age, gender, and I, I, I ask the same questions for both groups, but I started with two different groups in terms of the etiology. Adolescent patients with non-legion epilepsy versus adolescent with epilepsy of other types. Using this uh, study design, I can identify if the cell phone use is a risk for increased seizure frequencies in patients with non-legional epilepsy this is a case control study this is usually good for risk factor estimation you may have some difficulties uh, getting adolescent patients with non-legional epilepsy versus adolescent patients with other epilepsy types uh, but again this is a good study design for uh, risk factor estimation it has um, other problems which we will not go through now. How about if I start with adolescent epilepsy patients with non-legional epilepsy type? And then I just want to follow them for a particular period of time, maybe three months, six months, or whatever you decide to follow them for. And then I will identify of the whole population who used cell phones and for how many hours, for example, who had seizures and number of seizures. As well I may also collect these other related variables to help me to better understand the association between the exposure and the outcome so now I started with the whole population I follow them prospectively so this is a prospective cohort study the study duration can vary according to your interest you can do the three months six months one year or what have you after all I will separate the groups into those who had um, used the cell phone and those who did not use the cell phone and I will try to estimate the same association between cell phone use and increased number of seizures or seizure frequency. This is among the best observational study type. Especially it is a prospective and it can give you a clue of cause and association. It has its problems as well. So now we come across few examples of observational studies. But how about if I want to study the experimental type of study? Here I will start with adolescent with non epilepsy. I will divide them randomly into two groups. This is something that I control. So I divide them into two groups. I will provide one group with cell phones. I will provide the other group with nothing. I will randomly assign any new patient coming, and I think he will be in the study, to one of these groups randomly. It can be either alternating or computer-generated randomization but it is random. I don't assign them myself to which group. I know that I will have two separate groups, but it will be a randomly generated assignment. I will follow them for whatever duration I will do my study for, maybe three months, maybe six months. During the follow-up, I will identify who had seizures and what are the number of seizures in each group. But this is very crucial during the follow-up period. The examiner doesn't know the patient assigned to which group so this is a blinded the patient may know but he will be asked not to tell the examiner is if he's using a cell phone or if he's using nothing the only one who may know everything is um, the principal researcher and the study coordinator but they are not involved in assessing the patients for the variable what interested in which I mean they won't really be involved in asking who has seizures no seizures and who have what are the number of seizures because they should be blinded so the examiners are usually blinded but the patient may know furthermore study analysis can be blinded for which the statistician will analyze the whole data into two groups he doesn't know what group has been exposed to a cell phone what group has been exposed to nothing so this is controlled trials it can be single blinded double blinded or triple blinded after all, I want to estimate the association between the cell phone and the seizure frequency. So we've learned few examples of study designs. And if you think which study design is the best, the answer can be straightforward, but it can be expensive. 
the bottom of this pyramid is a low quality type of studies why the top of the pyramid is the best quality evidence in terms of the study designs ideas opinions editorial uh, uh, reports and the few reported data these are very low uh, quality studies which includes uh, simple surveys uh, reports of uh, expert opinions and other type of reports case series or case reports comes next and then cross-sectional studies and then cohort studies and so on and forth RCTs are really high in the terms of quality of evidence cohort studies are very good quality of evidence and of course usually the best of the best is the systematic reviews meta-analysis which we may not go through during this course this is the end of this lecture and thank you very much